There we go. Hello, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. We've still got people entering the waiting room, so just give us a minute while we get people come in and join us on audio and stuff. Fantastic to see so many of you joining us today. Welcome all. Welcome, everybody. Good to see you all. I can see that we're being joined by schools and students at home. We've got parents, whole classrooms full of people. There we go. Can everybody hear us? Fabulous to see you all. Give us a wave if you can hear us, guys. Give us a wave. Let's just see. Give it a nice big wave for everybody. Yes, there we go. Yay! I want to take this opportunity to give a shout out to my boy who's watching us as well. So hello to everybody from Santist uh, College. Nice to see uh, all our soldiers and stuff joining us too for our science session today. Still being joined by a few people, so bear with us, guys. Just a few more seconds, just admitting our all the people. Whole year five entered the waiting room. So, oh, there's more oh, people still coming. coming in. Coming yeah. in thick and fast. Literally hundreds, possibly thousands of little faces looking at us here. Lovely to see you all, guys. So excited to have you with us this morning. I'm so excited for today. Yes. Look at all the little faces waving. Hi, guys. Okay, I think <laughs> at the moment it's uh, quite down. So what we will do is we'll get started. I'll keep my eye on people and make sure that we've uh, got them all sorted in there. Fantastic. All right. So first things first. Good morning to everybody and welcome to Imperial Box Science Day Summer Blast Off. Yay! So glad you guys can join us. Uh, who we've got here is we've got uh, our scientist Sarah. Hello everybody, hello. And we have also got here our resident scientist Chris, um, who um, has been planning all the practicals with, his, with me today to make sure that you guys, uh, you've got someone else in the waiting room, to yeah, make yeah, sure no, that you sorry. guys all have a fantastic summer blast off to your holidays that are coming up because you've all guys you've worked really really hard and you totally enjoyed to have a little bit of fun um don't forget that if you uh, we have provided for you uh, worksheets for the session so there are downloadable worksheets whether you are in key stage one or key stage two there is stuff for you to do it has got um starter activities it's got information there about planning data evaluation everything that you could possibly need to have a fantastic science session whether you are at home or whether you are at school yes so boys and girls uh ladies and gentlemen all those people that are joining us today we are looking at forces so in today's lesson our biggest focus is going to be looking at the force of gravity uh, uh, the for a pull force that pulls things down to the center of the earth and we're also going to look at air resistance now we are going to show you what we can do to overcome those forces by generating a bigger force using a fuel yes and this is where uh, the whole idea of rockets come into play but before we do anything like that we desperately need to make sure that we've got our start activity one that sarah is going to quickly jump with you guys and do it with you Okay, so we're going to have a look then at making some predictions. Now, if you are fortunate enough to have been enrolled in a fantastic science lesson so far, you might already have had the opportunity to make some predictions. And there is information on those worksheets if you'd like to have a go at making a prediction along with us this morning. So I have got three different um, materials in front of me here. I'm just going to put my camera on to camera two so you yeah. can see what I've got on the table here in front of me. So in the first tray here I have got some tiny little marshmallows. So the type that are really good to eat. I promise you I haven't eaten them all this morning. I may have had a few. I have also got in here um, some coffee powder as well, some um, coffee mate, the type of things that you put in your coffee to, to make it white if you don't got milk available to you. And I've also got some alcohol hand gel here which I'm going to squirt into there in a minute. So what do you think that you would need then in order to make a prediction? How would we make a prediction, Craig? Well, a prediction is basically your best guess. What do you think will happen? So you can either say it will burn or it won't burn. But the big thing here is you've got to tell us why. Why do you think it will burn? But again, it's just a guess. You can use some knowledge that you've got from, from your previous experience or in your life if you know something will burn, like, for instance, marshmallow or uh, coffee made powder or um, alcohol hand gel. What do you think will burn? 
Do you know what we did to say, guys, earlier on? I'm really, really sorry, but we, our team, you are on mute today, but our team are actually waiting in the offices. So if you've got any questions or anything that you want to ask, feel free to send them a little bit of a message and they will get back to you as quickly as they possibly can, okay? So let's have a look then at making your very first prediction. Can we go on to screen two? Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. So our screen two, uh, on our screen two then, hopefully we can now see we've got marshmallows here. So I want you two guys to make a prediction now. So either in your classroom, or at home, I want you to think, do you think that our marshmallows will burn? Okay, so if I put a flame to it, do you think those marshmallows will burn? Yes or no? Make your prediction and decide why do you think that they will or will not burn? Okay, so I'm just going to give you 10 seconds. Do you think the marshmallows will burn? Yes or no? Well, I can see that a few people are... Uh, sending us little messages on their predictions that they've got going on. Okay, so we've got a few people who think yes, we've got a few people who think no. I hope that you have had a think about, Mr. Burroughs is getting involved here. Is that your entire class there, Mr. Burroughs? Look at the kids, they're like, yeah, go Mr. Burroughs! Oh, so we've got uh, Izzy that says yes, Scott that said yes. There's a lot of people that say yes, that's good. Harry Slater, yes, okay. So let's give it a go, mostly yes, that's an interesting prediction. Okay, so here we go, look, I've got my marshmallows, I'm just gonna put my flame to them. Let's see if these guys will burn, Oh, Is it a bigger flame? Up oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's gonna smell deliciously of campfires and marshmallows in here. Is that a burp? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that is a burp. There we go. Okay, can you see that then? That, that is burning. So our marshmallows, if you made the prediction of yes, marshmallows will burn, then you are correct. Um, fantastic. And I hope that you thought about the reasons behind why you thought marshmallows would burn. If you thought, no, that's still fine. It's great to make a prediction. Whether you're right or wrong, as scientists, we want to find out, well, is our prediction correct or is it incorrect? Okay, so let's have a look then at our second material here now as i said this is coffee mate and it's still a solid but it's in a powder form okay so it's very 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 tiny little pieces of solid in a tray so have a think do you think that our do you think that our coffee mate powder will burn yes or no make your predictions now have a little bit of a think about why do you think it will or will not burn so we've got uh, you saying no. C. Hughes says no. no. Izzy, Izzy says, says no. no. Have a little bit of thing. Oh, lots Ooh, of people are going to no says here. no. Kevin says no. Majority, Majority of the class says say no. no in Mr. Young's room. No from all of Mr. Burroughs' class. Thumbs down from the bookshelf. No. Somebody else in the waiting room. Yeah, no, got them. Yes, how to make coffee then. Mm, okay, so it's interesting, you guys have all come up with your own prediction now. Let's give it a go and see, does it burn or does it not burn? Are we ready? Here we go. So on the flame against there. Does not seem to want to burn. Unfortunately, no, it doesn't seem to burn at all. However, let's change the conditions a little bit. Now, Boys and girls, uh, ladies and gentlemen, everyone you can see, I've got a few candles here at the bottom. I've got the coffee mate in my hand. So what we are going to see is what happens, instead of just having the powder on the, the plate there, what happens if I introduce a little bit of air to it? What happens if I introduce a little bit of air to it? Oh, let's see, here we go, come on. Almost, <laughs> almost. This is science and it's there. Oh, no, my candles have died. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Don't worry, we can reset very quickly. So, Sarah, I'll, if you go to I'll go the next through the, one. the next one while, um, while Chris resets that then. So, um, if I just change my camera view then. So, we'll go on to our third one while Chris just resets that then. So, this one then is alcohol hand gel. So it's the kinds of things that we've all been using to make sure that we stay safe. We've been putting it on our hands and making sure that we clean our hands using our alcohol hand gel so that we're not spreading bacteria and viruses and stuff all over the place. So what do you think? Make a prediction. Do you think alcohol hand gel will burn? Yes or no? 
And then have a think about why do you think that? Okay, so make your prediction. So Izzy says yes, C Hughes says yes. Mariam says yes, no from Kevin, half and half in Mr. Young's class. Sarah, would you mind just switching the camera again? Yeah, sure, so, hang on. Let's see, I got it right now this time. Okay, let's have another go. Split decision in Mr. Burroughs' classroom, unsure from Bookshaw. All that rhymes. Oh, come on. Oh, your candles are letting you down. They are letting me down today, I can't believe it. Want to go a bit lower? Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit lower. Zainab says yes. Hannah and uh, Harris, we don't know. Make your choice, my friends. The Lick School are going with yes. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. You know what? Oh, we love a bit of science. It never works as you expect it to. So let's have, let's give back then to our alcohol hand gel. Oh, hang on. There we go. Pre oh, there we go. Yep. Okay, so our alcohol hand gel then. Have we all made our predictions about alcohol hand gel? I'm hoping that we have. I'm just going to squirt a little bit of my alcohol hand gel onto the tray there. And Kevin says yes, because it's got alcohol in it. So that's great, because he's made a prediction and he's thought about why he thinks it will burn as well. So he's justified his prediction there. So let's have a look then. So if I put, I'm just going to move my alcohol hand gel out of the way so we don't have um, any issues here. So if I just get my flame to my alcohol hand gel, that doesn't look like it's burning, actually, does it? And that's an interesting one, because we can't actually see a flame there. However, if I hold my piece of paper over the top of my alcohol hand gel, can you guys see that that's all burning? And actually burning really, really well. I'm just going to put that on there. Just pop it in there. Oh, there we go. Still doesn't look like it's burning, does it? But if I put my paper over the top, look. Oh. There we go. And this is one of the reasons why we need to make sure that we're really, really careful with uh, alcohol hand gels because actually alcohol is a really, really good fuel, okay? So if we can just really go back to, I think I've sorted this problem out with my flames. I do apologize for that, but if I do this right. Do you want me to hold? Uh, no, that's okay. You sure? Hey, look at that, guys. I'm... As you can see, the coffee mate actually does burn. It actually does burn because I've aerated it. I've made it separate a little bit more. And because it's separated, there's enough oxygen in it as well. And that one small little particle of my uh, coffee mate is actually made of sugar. Sugar which is a lovely fuel. We eat sugar so that we can get fuel for our bodies. And you can see there that it actually does burn as well. It's so amazing. So what you think might not burn in one situation can actually burn in another one. Isn't that interesting? That was cool, really cool. And loads of people thought that was cool too. We had loads of comments on that from people. Fabulous. So what I want you to do now then, so we've, worked, we've talked about predictions so far, haven't we? So we've looked at, well, marshmallows, yes, they burn. We've looked at well, our coffee powder here, our coffee mate, and we said, well, sometimes it burns um, if you can manage to get loads of air around it, but it's not great at burning in a tray. And then we looked at our alcohol hand gel, didn't we? And we said that, well, that burns, but you can't really see the flame form it, can you? So I want you now to make a prediction which type of fuel do you think is best? So do you think marshmallows are the best fuel? Do you think coffee mate is the best fuel? Or do you think alcohol is the best fuel? So make your prediction and have a think about why you think that that would be the best fuel to use. What Especially for our rocket. Especially in, in, in terms of our rocket. Absolutely. So coffee. So I've got Kevin and Kevin says coffee. Kevin that's, says that's coffee. Fun. Okay. It's a good idea. I like it. Yeah. Izzy says uh, coffee. Yeah. Yeah, Izzy coffee, mate. Coffee as well. Yes. So alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, yes, it is. Majority of you two think the hand sanitizer, alcohol. Miss Lupton's class. Alcohol. Yes, alcohol burns if you, uh, oh, you don't get flame. We need alcohol because it burns. But you don't get that. Okay, so we're going to test that out. Now, boys and girls, you've actually given us quite a lot of predictions. So use that knowledge that we've got there. And we're going to look at something 
For schools that have actually subscribed to Imperial Box, you might have seen this before. I'm going to show you the one version, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to turn that into a rocket. Now, this one is actually called a bush bottle. And you are right, boys and girls, anybody that predicted, I am going to use alcohol. Now, the alcohol that I'm going to use for this one is actually called methylated spirits. Now, I know that methylated spirits can burn as a liquid form. But what's really impressive is if I change that liquid into a gas, then it becomes even better. So boys and girls, what I've got here is I've got 50 milliliters of a methylated spirit. I'm gonna put that into my water bottle. Now I need to change it into, um, I need to change it into a gas. And the only way that I can do that is by shaking my bottle. Now this process, is also called volatilization. That's a very big scientific word, volatilization, because I'm changing the liquid into a gas by shaking it. So all I'm going to do is... Go on, get your muscles on it, Chris. I'm trying my best. <laughs> Give it a good old shake, turn it to its side. Give it a good old uh, roll about. Give it a few more shakes. And then quickly just empty all of the liquid that I've got inside there. Now, it might seem that the liquid, all the liquid's pouring out, but I give you my word that there's still something in there. Now, if most of you remember, I told you that I put in a specific amount of methylated spirits. So I put in 50 milliliters of methylated spirits. Now, if I ask Sarah, Sarah, how much is left of my 50 milliliters? Oh, I would say there's about 25 milliliters left. 25 milliliters left. Now, we're going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit better, boys and girls. Oops, just make sure the camera's up a little bit. There we go. So look very carefully and see what happens. Oops. You're doing this on the table, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see what happens, guys. Now I've got a naked flame. Naked flame's gonna go inside. Wow! You guys see that? And look what happens now. That is basically the air pressure that's basically forcing the thing in. But how many of you saw that lovely whoosh going on? That massive that a massive amount of force this has generated because I changed it from a liquid into a gas. So the gas would be my better propellant. Yes, it's alcohol, but alcohol as a gas. So we're gonna use that idea. We're gonna use all of that and we're gonna show you how we can make it into a rocket. Okay, so what we're gonna do now then is we're gonna use that alcohol as a gas to see if we can get a rocket to propel across the room. Now you can see that we are setting up our little washing line for our rocket to kind of travel across here. And I have got a two liter plastic bottle, the kind that you have sort of water or coke or whatever in. And I'm gonna use some alcohol. So this is pure alcohol. So there's more alcohol in this than in your hand gel. So think about what we got in the hand gel there. And in comparison, Fingers crossed, this should go really well. So I'm just going to pour a very small amount into my bottle here because we don't need loads. Okay. And make sure that my alcohol is well out of the way here. Now, in the same way as the wash bowl, we've got to make sure that that liquid here is turned into a gas. So I've got to make sure that I really agitate that well, turn my bottle. <laughs> Okay, so most of that alcohol now should be in a gas. I'm just going to pour off anything that I've got remaining. Right now, on my little washing line here, I don't know how well you can see this. Chris, stay there. Move that way, that there. Okay, so you can see how I have got a little bit of um, a straw. There's still a little bit of liquid left. Just, I'll like, just pour that yeah. out. We don't want any disasters here. So I'm hoping now I should have alcohol as a gas. I'm going to just stick my bottle onto my washing line here. You might need to tighten that up a little yeah. bit more. Okay. And then I'm going to take my lighter here and we're going to see if we can get the bottle to whoosh across the room in the same way as we had our whoosh bottle. Are we ready? 
Feel free to give the countdown, guys. Are you ready? Should we go? Three, two, one. <laughs> so we have used uh, alcohol to propel a rocket across through the force from the alcohol burning off was greater than the resistance of air around us, which is why it went in that direction. Because we got it on a line there, gravity wasn't able to pull it down, and that's why it went across the room fantastically. So, boys and girls, now that was a simple way of looking at it. So, we've got a lot of pressure that built inside the bottle because of the alcohol burning. It pushed itself through the air. It's such a beautiful thing to show. But we're not going to stop there. We're going to show you something else. Now, oh, hands up. How many of you like tea? Oh, I love a cup of tea. Oh, I do love a cup of tea. Now, watch very closely, boys and girls. We've got tea bags here. And if we're going to zoom in, so we're going to change the camera so that you guys can see when it zooms in. Look very carefully what happens to each of these tea bags when we burn them. Look very closely. Okay, so what we've done is I've literally just taken a normal tea bag like you'd make your cup of tea at home and I've cut the top and the bottom off and emptied the tea leaves out. So I've literally now just got a little empty tea bag. Do you know where Let me see here. Can you see that? So a little empty tea bag, look. And I'm just going to stand that onto my tray. Now this time, it's slightly different because we haven't got any alcohol here and you, therefore you might think, well, hang on a minute. Make a prediction. Do you think the tea bag will burn, yes or no? Why do you think it will burn? Okay, so is the answer, yes, yeah, it's going to burn. Wagtails, also yes. Are uh, You guys are making your predictions at home. Okay, so we think it's going to burn, but will it actually uh, rise up? So I set fire to this tea bag, look. If you made it, Prediction about, yeah, it will burn. Will it fly? Ooh, it flies too, okay? Let's just watch that again. Can we go on the uh, screen one. one to yeah. see it fly? So there it is burning. Oh, there we go. it's being carried up into the air, this time by a convection current. So the air particles are getting warmer and it's lifting that tea bag once it's set on fire up into the air. So actually we can use all the things as well in order to propel objects. Now, we've seen quite a lot of burning. We've shown you how we can use, yes, it's called the tea rocket. Tea rocket. Now, if we can take all of that knowledge, everything that we've got, uh, gathered, we can actually use fuel to our advantage, especially alcohol. And for this last demonstration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my alcohol cannon right there at the bottom. So I am going to use my fuel, uh, the alcohol that we've used, the pure alcohol for this one. And you're going to see how if I'm compressing the flame, if I make it into a very small, narrow tube, I can make it fly even further and faster like we saw on our bottle rocket and our wish bottle. So boys and girls, everybody, so what I've got here is I've got my lovely uh, uh, alcohol tube and I've got my little ping pong ball, which I will shoot in a second. What I need to do is um, have a little bit of alcohol, which I'm going to use, put that into my tube. We're starting off as a liquid again, guys. And once again, when he pours it down the tube there, he's going to try and turn that liquid into a gas. Yes. Uh, make sure it's a nice, nice gas that I've got here. And then uh, I make sure that I okay. lock it into place. I do apologize. <laughs> um, so, and make sure that I pop it into my, oh, no, just make sure I pop it into my holder. So now you'll notice that when Chris is setting this up, look, he's got, a, he's got um, an angle for his projection. Um, so you, you would maybe want to think about, do you think it would make a difference if it was angled lower or if it was angled higher as to what the projection of, and I think it's a ping pong ball that he's going to put in here. Oh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to shoot a ping pong ball. What the projection of our ping pong ball is going to be. All right, boys and girls, so now I've got my alcohol in there, I've got my ping pong ball, and I've also got my ignition source. Now look very quickly, this is going to be very, very quick. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. In three, two, two one. <laughs> I, that was so fast, I bet you guys uh, back there maybe didn't even see it. It like literally shot oh, across the room. Guys, that is when you basically compress all of that gas into, or that burning into a small tube, you can build up more and more pressure, and that basically shoots it through the air. 
So everything that we've created, in a sense, was to show you how you can overcome gravity and air resistance by providing a bigger force behind it to push something through the air. Now, you boys and girls are going to do something very similar, but you are not going to use alcohol, unfortunately. That is uh, uh, from a health safety point of view, but you are going to build your own mini marshmallow rocket launcher. Now, Sarah will quickly go through the steps so you guys can see how you can build it and then what we're going to test with it as well. Okay, so um, if you were fortunate enough to have downloaded the information that you needed, I'm hoping that you guys have all got the equipment at home or in your classrooms in order to have, oh, I can see that Kevin's already got his all set up there. Fantastic. Yay, look at you guys, all your tubes, all good to go. Miss Young's classroom, I'm loving it. Well done. Yay. Okay, so you guys are going to have a go at the link school's ready as well. So you guys are going to have a go at making your very own marshmallow rocket launchers. Can we go on to um, two. Uh, screen two? Yeah. Yep. Fabulous. So equipment that you guys are going to need then. So hopefully you have got some kind of like an insulating tube with a little hole down the middle. So this is like a bendy bit of foam that you've got here. You should also have a balloon. So a normal size balloon. You're going to need a pair of scissors um, and going to need some sticky tape too. Yeah. Sticky tape as well. And what I've been eating for most of the morning, a bag of mini marshmallows. Now, I don't think it's science unless you actually test whether the marshmallows are edible at some stage. Um, but you obviously, if you're in the classroom, make sure that your teacher has okayed that before you check the, the, um, the consumption rating of your marshmallows. So what you're going to do then is you're going to take your tube. You are going to cut from your tube a piece which is about 10 centimetres in length. It doesn't need to be particularly long. And actually, if you try and make it longer, it might not work well. But maybe this is something that you want to do, try out as your own um, independent variable, the length of your tube, depends how much tubing you've got. So what we're then going to do is you're going to take your balloon. So grab your balloons, guys, and you're literally just going to tie a knot into the top of your deflated balloon. Okay, so you're tying the end of your balloon there. And then we're gonna take a pair of scissors and we're just gonna snip off the, just the end of the balloon, not the end with the knot, but the, the round end at the top here. So what we've basically created is like a little sort of rubber cup here with the, uh, with the knot on the bottom. So once you've got that, you can take your foam tube and you're literally just going to try and squeeze your rubber band over the top of your tube so that hopefully the little knot look is in the middle where the hole of the tube is. Now, it's a good idea to take some sticky tape and to stick this down because we're going to be creating a force using the rubber or the elastic of our tube okay so what you should have now then you mean balloon did i not you said oh, tube. sorry i did mean balloon yes apologies for that so what you've now got then essentially is a little rocket launcher and if you take your marshmallows or you could use bits of curl paper or whatever you like and pop them into the top of your rocket launcher can we go on to the yeah, screen one. one you can then maybe it's not safe to fire it at a person although he's wearing goggles Safety goggles. So I can then take my, yeah, let's see if we can get one in your mouth. So I can then take my little rocket launcher and pull back on the balloon. Ah, oh, let it fly. It went all the way over there. And it shoots right over the top. So um, I want you guys to have a go with one of these. Make your own little mini marshmallow rocket launcher. Think about, well, if you uh, um, have a look at the planning, have a, have a decide on your worksheet if you're going to have a go at planning, data, or evaluation. Maybe have a go at changing the direction that you're sending it in. Think about maybe you could see if it makes a difference how hard you pull back or measure the distance that you're pulling back the rubber, um, the, the, uh, balloon. rubber balloon. Absolutely. Um, does it make a difference if you put different items in the end? Obviously, make sure that you're thinking about health and safety. You don't put anything too hard or heavy inside of your rocket launcher. That's why we're using marshmallows, because if you do end up 
flirting it across is not going to hit someone and hurt them, okay? Boys and girls, you can also think about the size of your tube. So uh, we've now we said 10 centimeters, but you can actually make it a bit longer, see if that works better. To make it shorter, does that work better? There's so many things that you guys can change about the experiment and investigate, see what actually happens. Now, this is going to be your mission for the day. Well, so to see when... and, and your mission for this morning, oh, this sorry. afternoon, we have got a whole new mission for you guys. If you guys are going to join us for our afternoon session where we've got a nice bit of uh, uh, being fun with food or fun with food, you're more than welcome to join us at one o'clock. The link has been sent to all the schools as well, to all the teachers, to everybody that signed up. So please make sure that you join us for that session. We're going to have a little bit of fun uh, with a few things. We're going to show you what we can do with that with some uh, fun, exciting ex uh, uh, demos as well. And we do hope to see that we're also going to announce yes. winners of our fantastic superhero competition. So you can see behind us, look, Imperial Box has characters. So we have a biologist, a chemist, and a physicist. So all of the areas of science, and we asked you guys to see if you could come up with your own superhero designs for our characters. And we have had some amazing entries, and we have got some fantastic prizes for you. So we are going to show you at the end of our session this afternoon some of our entries and share with you the winners of our um, of our competition. competition. Yeah. yeah. So, boys and girls, that's all we've got uh, for today. So, we're all going to leave you here so you guys can go on with your investigation and try and see if you can uh, find out all the things about your rocket, how you can make it better, how you can make it fly further, all the wonderful things that to do with that. So, boys and girls, uh, mums, dads, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate everything. It has been absolutely fantastic seeing all of you guys. Katie, don't whack your mum with that. I can see what you're doing with that tube there, Katie. <laughs> you all said it. <laughs> thank you guys so much for everything. Have fun, Shreya. Bye, Izzy. Bye, Gemma. Bye, guys. Thanks, bye, mommy. Bye, bye, Christine. Bye, Michael. I've already started firing my first at them. <laughs> what we like get some marshmallow firing on bye guys bye thank you so Harry. much thanks joe bye naomi bye christine bye everybody we'll see you this afternoon for more scientific fun all right oops and we are